More of the Zach Gelb Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. All right, welcome back in. 417 from the Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios. This is the Zach Gelb Show. Matt Harvey serving his final day of his three-day suspension that we found out was issued over the weekend. Here's what we know. He played golf on Saturday morning, didn't show up for the night game, and then claimed to have a headache, and the Mets decided to suspend him, and he did miss his start yesterday. Mets uh, win two out of three over the weekend, but with Harvey not on the mound, can't get the victory yesterday to get the sweep over the fish, and they welcome in the Giants tonight to start a three-game series. And now joining us on the Zach Gelb Show is the Mets pre- and post-host on SNY, and that's our good friend Gary Apples, kind enough to hop on board with us right now. Gary, appreciate the time. Thank you, and how are you? My pleasure, Zach. Good. Very well. How about yourself? Well, I'm doing all right, and I'll tell you, as a Mets fan, I'd be doing a little bit better if we knew what the heck was going on uh, with Matt Harvey. How did you interpret the actions that unfolded over the weekend with Matt Harvey being suspended? Well, I think there was clearly an issue, and I don't think that this was a one-time issue, Zach. I think this is something that has built up over time. If they took this extreme a measure on a day that Matt was scheduled to pitch, which he was yesterday, and he showed up and they sent him home. This was obviously something that really rankled them, and I don't think that it's something that is new. I think this was an ongoing pattern. And again, I don't think we know very much about this, just putting pieces together here. And so I think they needed to send a message, not just to Matt, but to the rest of the clubhouse to say, we're going to do this the right way, and we're not going to stand for one guy and then 24 others. And so I think they made a very loud statement by what they did with Matt Harvey, and I think the hope is he gets the message and he can move forward and do so successfully and the clubhouse can do so successfully. You're right. From the public perspective, we don't know a lot about this situation, but what we do know is Harvey had the incident when he missed the practice before the NLCS. Uh, Just with all that being said, there's not a lot of clarity on this situation. Sandy gives a statement yesterday. I know that he also did a radio interview on the MLB Network, but he didn't take any questions. I thought that was a bad job by the GM. Do you think he should have provided a little bit more than what he gave us yesterday? You know, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to jump on Sandy here. I, listen, I, I think you know there's been so much made about the fact that you know the more things change, the more they stay the same. And the Mets have had a public perception issue along these lines for many years. But I look at Sandy and the job that Sandy and his team have done. They've been in the postseason consecutive years, just the second time in the history of the franchise that is the case. And so, however they've gone about their business. They've done so successfully, and a lot has been made not just about this but about the injuries and the way they've handled injuries. And I know that the, the public perception on it is not great, but I'm not sure that you can blame anything along those lines on Sandy and on John Rico and, and the front office and the way things have been handled, handled here. Listen, you've got young pitchers, and, and a guy like Noah Syndergaard – I'm sure Sandy has some regrets about that. There's no question about it, that they probably should have insisted that he have the MRI before he pitches again. But I'm not going to sit here and criticize the way Sandy's gone about his business because he has taken an organization that had very little in the farm system, was losing baseball games at a rapid rate, has put them in the postseason in back-to-back years, and, and made the Mets the discussion in New York. Now, I know the Yankees have gotten off to a great start this year, but I think it's a fair statement to say in many ways this became a, Yank, a Mets town over the last couple of years, and they still have the chance to, to make it a Mets town again this year. So while I know the public perception on it, Zach, is not great, I'm not going to sit here and criticize Sandy and the way he's gone about this. But how do you suspend the player and not even take a question about it? Like, that's just not right to the media, no? Well... He might not have taken a question about it, a question about it, but I think the story is out there. I, I think doing his job in this town, um, you know it's going to come out, and it did come out. It didn't take very long. Now, we don't know all of the particulars, but I think we've got a pretty good sense of what happened here, and I think if, I think if the story hadn't got out, and, and, and I'm not defending Sandy that he didn't take a question on it, but they clearly had a reason for not taking a question on it. The stories come out. They knew it was going to come out. They know that in this town these stories are going to come out one way or the other. Um, And so while a lot of people don't love the way he handled it, I think he thinks he did what he had to do. And, again, I think his track record speaks for itself. I think I'll leave it at that. 
Gary Apple with us right now does Mets pre and post on SNY does a tremendous job Gary uh, the bigger part of this problem we're getting past the part of Sandy Alderson not giving much yesterday is Matt Harvey not showing up and uh, that you can't do that you know if I don't show up for my job and don't give enough notice I'm gonna get fired we know that's how it works and in this case Harvey he gets uh, suspended for three days it's been described as a contentious relationship with the Mets and Harvey for the last few years Harvey and let's be fair he hasn't released any statement yet either how do we get to this point where this guy was once the talk of the town and now when it's 2018 comes and goes he's probably not going to be brought back by this team well i think i think the issue here is this i mean when he started the all-star game uh out at city field was it 2013 i mean matt harvey was on his way to becoming one of if not the best pitcher in all of baseball and i think along with that comes a certain amount of leeway that you give to your star players. The problem is such a young player, not a great body of work to go into that sort of leeway. And then the injuries started piling up. And when you look, Zach, at the, schedule, at, the, at, the at the record of Matt Harvey uh, throughout his big league career to this point, he's won game over 500. One game, he's 31 and 30. Not exactly the stuff of superstars. Now, I know... Part of that is based on the fact that he's gone through Tommy John and the thoracic outlet syndrome surgery and all of those things that play into it. But again, not the stuff of legend. And I think early on he was treated like a legend without the body of work to back it up. So I think that began what was a process of, and and I don't always love using this word, but the word entitlement. I think there was a certain amount of that that was uh, that was allowed to take place, and because of that, he sort of built this reputation and maybe got away with some stuff that others didn't get away with. And again, when you're on top, when you are a Hall of Famer, when you are Clayton Kershaw or Madison Bumgarner, and do the sorts of things over a sustained period of time, okay, you can get away with with some of those things. But Matt Harvey didn't do that. He's had intermittent spurts of greatness followed by a fair amount of mediocrity. So I think that has led to where we are today. And I think the bigger issue at this very moment, Zach, is the fact that his last couple of starts, he's gotten hit very hard. And I think a bigger concern for me is the fact that he he, he got hit very hard last time he pitched and came out of that start and said, this is about as good as I felt in a long time. Ball came out of my hand really well. That, to me, is of a concern because – Where's the Matt Harvey that we used to know, the guy who was the quote-unquote, you know, dark knight, this intimidating, bigger-than-life figure? That's not the guy, to me, who gave up five or six runs and then said that's about as good as I've felt in a long time. That, to me, Zach, is of a bigger concern. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, With Harvey, though, do you think there's a chance that he turns this thing around and it ends nicely with the Mets, or have we already gone way too past that point? Uh, when you say it ends nicely with the Mets, he's going to re-sign with the Mets after after next season. Uh, that you know, he's 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 a Scott Boris client, so I think that is. How about looking I like think, a pitcher that could actually go on out there and give you a quality? Yeah, start? now that's that's the bigger question. I mean, and listen, with with thoracic outlet, everything I've read about it, and listen, there's not a great amount of historical stuff you can go back and look at and say this is the way guys respond to it. The basic thought process is you you don't really start to regain your velocity for 10 months. And May is 10 months out from the surgery in July. And so he should be rounding back into some sort of recognizable Matt Harvey form around this time. Of course, we didn't get to see that yesterday because he didn't pitch, because he was sent home. And we didn't see it in his two previous starts. Now, the velocity is creeping up there. He's up there 95, 96, 97. So we're seeing that. Now can he command his stuff? And that's been a big issue. So I'm not writing him off yet by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's too soon to do that. I think over the next couple of months, maybe over the next month, we'll get a clear indication, a clear indication of who Matt Harvey, the pitcher, is right now. Gary Apple with us right now. There's a grievance out there uh, from what we're reading all online. Uh, He's going to have to come back into that clubhouse tomorrow. How is he welcome back into this clubhouse with this ongoing uh, process still out there? You know, Terry Collins was just asked about that um, a couple of minutes ago in his pregame address to the media. He said that's on Matt. Is he going to address the team as a whole? Is he going to individually speak to guys? I think something clearly needs to be done. 
We heard Jose Reyes say following the game yesterday that Matt, what he did was disappointing. And so clearly there is there is that feeling inside that clubhouse amongst some, if not all, that that he has let his teammates down. So he has to address it, how he goes about and does that. That's up to him. What he needs to do now, Zach, he's got to let his actions do the talking. Words are fine, but words are cheap. Show up, pitch well, fall in line, become one of 25 guys who are all pulling for the same uh, hope and cause of getting back to the postseason and win a World Series, which, quite frankly, this team felt it was going to do when the season began, that they were going to be in the hunt. And I still think they can be in the hunt. They need to get guys back and get them healthy and get them on the field. But I think Matt needs to let his actions speak louder than his words. With Reyes, you knew someone was going to address this yesterday in the clubhouse with all the reporters asking about it and just doing their job. I know Reyes is a popular figure in that clubhouse, but isn't he not the best person in the world to be talking about team rules with his past? I thought uh, Reyes was a little bit out of line, and I would have liked to hear it a little bit uh, yesterday from somebody else. Well, uh, you know, out of line, I'm not sure. Slippery slope, yes. I sort of raised an eyebrow when Jose said what he said, but at the same time, he's a veteran inside that clubhouse, and somebody needed to say it, and nobody else did. And so the fact that Reyes did, maybe he wasn't the ideal guy in light of what he's been through. And I'm not condoning for one second what he's been through, but um, something needed to be said. He was the guy who said it, and I think I'll just leave it at that. Was he the perfect guy? No, but at least he was a guy who said something. Wrap it up with Gary Apple, who joins us right now on the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, the Jersey. Uh, let's get to something positive. Uh, Bruce and Conforto, uh, they've been the saving parts of this team so far to start off this season, which has not been a good start, as we all know it. Just how about what you've seen from Jay Bruce and Michael Conforto uh, back at it with the Mets this year? Just out of our production meeting for the pregame show, both guys we discussed. Conforto scuffling a little bit right now, but, boy, his swing has been terrific. He's letting the baseball travel deeper. Um, His swing has been just rock solid, and he's in there again today against the lefty. Um, And he's going to be in there against lefties. He's an everyday player right now. He has looked great. He's got terrific power to all fields um, and is becoming the player I think the Mets thought he could be. So I think we're going to see Conforto in there against lefties, righties, period. Will he get a day off against the Kershaw? Who knows? Maybe, but we'll see how it plays out in the weeks ahead. As for Bruce, I think he came in with a chip on his shoulder, Zach. I think he wanted to show people that he could play here. Uh, if you look at Jay Bruce, look at the numbers Jay Bruce has put up in his career. Now, I know he's done it in Cincinnati. I know he's done it at you know, Great America Ballpark, which is a small park. But he's a guy who hit more than 30 home runs on multiple occasions, three-time All-Star, As Terry Collins liked to say, look at the back of the baseball card. It's an indication of who a guy is. Jay Bruce is showing who he is. He is a big-time professional baseball player, and I think the fact that he heard so much negativity this offseason, couldn't play here, wasn't a good fit. I think he came in a little bit um, motivated, to say the least, and I think we've seen that in the results that he has uh, put up so far. How far away do you see Cespedes coming back? What's the latest on him? Big question there. He's in town right now. They brought him up from Florida for further testing. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he is now eligible today or tomorrow to come off the disabled list. I don't think it's happening, um, but I think they're running tests on him here. So uh, to try and figure out not just this particular occasion when he went on the deal, but this has been a reoccurring theme with him. And I think they're trying to get to the bottom of why this keeps happening. And I think until they do that, I'm not sure we will know the answer to that. So I would be purely speculating without real information to back it up as to when he's going to be back. It seems like for a long period of time now, the Mets get hurt more than any team in the league. How do you interpret the situation? Is it something with the medical staff? Is it just bad luck? How do you determine what's going on? Because we see more injuries with the Mets than any other team in the league. Well, I think we're focused on the Mets injuries. I think around baseball there are a lot of injuries, and and I think maybe the Mets have a higher concentration. But I looked at some stats the other day, and not necessarily the case. What happens here is that I think this has gotten the attention that it has because of the way injuries have been handled, the fact that Cespedes got hurt, didn't go on the disabled list, came back a few days later, and then got injured, went on the DL. Syndergaard 
has the, the tendonitis in his biceps, refuses the MRI, insists on going out there and pitching, gets hurt, he's out until who knows when, August possibly. So I think it's the way the, the injuries have been handled is why they've gotten so much attention. I don't think there's an issue with the medical staff. I think, think about it, hospital for special surgery is at the forefront of medicine and orthopedic medicine. Uh, Ray Ramirez, he is a, a terrific trainer and the head of the training staff. I just think, Zach, it's the way it has been handled that has raised red flags. Not so much. And again, we're here in the fishbowl, and we live it, and we see it, and we talk about it, and there are back pages and front pages that splash it across. So I think um, it gets all this attention. But I'm telling you, stuff is going on in other cities. Teams are getting hurt. Players are getting hurt. There's just more attention to it here that has driven this discussion. Let me just ask you one more question before we let Gary Apple run, just because I know it's easy for the fan to blame the trainer and just say that he's awful. You use the word terrific. What makes him a terrific trainer? I think from all accounts, from everybody, and I've looked at this, and, and everybody I have spoken with on, on his behalf and on the, the medical staff's behalf, um, I think the prevailing feeling is this is not just a competent group, but this is a group that is at the forefront of sports medicine. And so do I know every trainer in baseball? Do I know every team doctor in baseball? Of course I don't. But the reputations of these, these men and, and the respective staffs around them is rock solid. And, and what can we go off when it comes to medicine? We go off reputation we go off you know the the what they've built up in their careers and it points to to these staffs as being uh not only competent but very solid and so that that's what i go off i mean obviously i i can't tell you their where they met went to medical school where they did their pt training and and everything that's gone into that i can only go by reputation and from what i've been told they are and the mets re re established the way they go about business and the way they do their nutritional uh, uh, direction and everything that's gone on with Barwis down in Florida and the academy that they've, uh, that they've established there. What I have been told is this is, this is solid, big-time, forefront um, medical treatment and training. And so that's what I've heard, that's what I know, and that's what I go by. And who am I as a layman to question that? Uh, I, I know it's easy to sit here and say they've had all these injuries, but look at this. They're not exactly – now, pitchers are pitchers, and it's a whole different set of rules. But when it comes to players, the Mets are not exactly a young team. Cespedes, 30 north of 30. Walker, 30 north of 30. Reyes, north of 30. Cabrera, north of 30. They are not – you know, a young team. So the fact that guys are getting hurt, okay. Guys get hurt when you're not 25 years old. Now, again, pitchers out of that discussion, but uh, I don't think it's uncommon for players of this age and at this point in their careers to suffer injuries and not just a little injury, but injuries that, that can keep you out for a while. Gary, we appreciate it. Thanks for the time as always. My pleasure, Zach. Good to be with you. There's Gary Apple. Does Mets pre and post on SNY? A few things off that. Number one, Harvey has to show up. That's the bottom line with this. We can blame all we want, how the relationship got to this point. He has to show up. That's the bottom line. And he did it, and they suspended him for three days. I'm fine with it. Now, here's the thing. With Sandy Alderson, he needs to give a little bit more than a 20-second statement yesterday. He needs to answer some questions. And by him not doing that, then all the reporters, and they would have went to the players anyway, but then they don't have enough clarity, so then they go to the players, and then you have a situation where Jose Reyes says, the team puts rules in spring training, and everybody in there knows what the rules are, and when you miss that, it's not acceptable. I would rather have a different spokesperson yesterday than Jose Reyes, because let's remember, Jose Reyes missed a significant amount of time in baseball last year because of the domestic abuse situation with his wife. Not a good look for Reyes yesterday. Now, someone had to say something. It was Reyes. I don't want to hear from Reyes about this. I just don't. I don't want to hear uh, from Reyes about breaking team rules. Because what he did was much worse than this. But with Harvey, he's just got to show up. 
And this is a situation, it's a contentious relationship, and it's going to get worse. Because if he keeps this grievance, the players may welcome him back, but that's going to be one awkward situation between the team and Harvey, and it continues to get awkward. And Matt Harvey used to be the talk of this town. Matt Harvey went through the injury, pitched in the 2015 World Series, exited that night, wanted the ball, was the fierce competitor, and that Matt Harvey, I don't know where the heck he went. He had another injury with the thoracic outlet syndrome, and he's never been the same pitcher since. And my confidence of him turning it around are slim to none. I don't have great confidence in Matt Harvey anymore. And we'll see when he comes back. Mike Puma says he expects it to be on Friday. That's what he's hearing. So he will avoid the home fans on Wednesday, and they'll also get him to do a bullpen session. And then we get to the medical staff, because Gary said a lot about the medical staff. It's just so many injuries. And the problem I think it is, is when a player gets an injury, they wait and wait and wait. And the ironic part is they have now a 10-day DL. And they just keep on waiting. And then you have an incident like Cespedes where he continues to take BP, his hammy's not good, and then he further damages it. And like today, you have Cabrera who's been out for a while, well, the swelling's way down on his thumb. Yesterday, he couldn't bend it. This is per Collins a few moments ago, and today he could do, he could do everything. But they're going to keep him out of the lineup for a few more games in order to let his leg and his thumb heal up. Why not just put him on a 10-day DL? Why not? I don't get it. It's a communication that just baffles me with this organization, whether it's in response to big issues or the communication of how do you handle an injury. And look at the Syndergaard situation. That was a joke. He says, I'm not getting the MRI, and then you pitch him? What, are you out of your mind? If you thought it was significant enough to get the MRI, then why would you pitch him? And the communication of this organization is an absolute disgrace. And once again, we're in this spot again. where the bets. It was supposed to be a promising season. And now, so far, it looks very dysfunctional. And we'll see if they're able to turn it around. The last two years, when you had the Mets go on that unexpected World Series run, no one saw that coming. Collins got the best out of him. Last year, all the injuries. No one thought they'd be back in the postseason with all the injuries they suffered, especially when we sat there in August. Collins got the best out of them and turned it around. Can he turn it around for three years in a row? We shall see. But right now, you can't expect Matt Harvey to be a formidable pitcher on this team because he's been brutal this year. And now there's a major issue with the organization that will be ongoing. 609-919-D200. Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Mac Collins was drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. We will talk to his former head football coach in college, Larry Fedora from UNC. When we get back on the break, he's scheduled to join us. When we come back and still to come in the 5 o'clock hour at 515, John Forslund will join us to talk some NHL playoffs. 440 is the time. In the Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios, this is the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. We will take another break, break number two today, and we'll be back right after this.